Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria and Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria set to call off strike. Return stolen funds with interest, ICPC tells foreign countries. Saudi Arabia invests a billion dollars on recovery in Africa. On Business Express today, the Africa Finance Summit comes in focus. And we are reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Good to have you join us on the business side of life. And we start by telling you that ongoing industrial action by the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria and the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria is to be suspended with immediate effect following the agreement to implement financial autonomy for state's legislature and judiciary with effect from next week. This is contained in a memorandum of action presented by the Minister of Labor and Employment after a series of mediation with aggrieved parties and concerned organs of government. The ongoing industrial action shall be suspended with immediate effect from the date of the agreement contained in this memorandum of action, provided that the conditionality indeed is effected immediately and others affected within the 45 days window as earlier prescribed in this memorandum of action. Saudi Arabia has announced plans to invest $1 billion to support African nations in their recovery from the shock of COVID-19. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman says the Saudi Fund for Development will implement future projects, loans and grants in developing countries of Africa in an amount exceeding 3 billion Saudi reals or nearly $1 billion this year. Saudi Arabia has already invested some $4 billion in various projects in the continent's energy, mining, telecommunications, and food sectors. The National Insurance Commission, NICOM, and the Federal Ministry of Transportation are collaborating to ensure provision of adequate insurance for road transport owners and users within Nigeria and ECOWAS member countries. To this end, the Ministry and NICOM have agreed to immediately establish a joint committee to look into different areas of interest to ensure a mutually beneficial relationship. The Minister of State Transportation, Gwemisola Saraki, said the Ministry of Transportation has embarked on a transformation program that will have tremendous impact on the lives and well-being of the Nigerian people. The Commissioner for Insurance, Olorundari, Sunday, Thomas informed the minister that the commission is ensuring order in the insurance sector, particularly in the vexed issue of fake insurances in the road transport sector, and has developed technology for verification of insurance policies. President Muhammadu Buhari is back in Abuja after a four-day official visit to France. While in France, President Buhari joined dozens of African and European leaders at the Africa-France Summit aimed at supporting African countries to recover from the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on their economies. The support will come from the special drawing rights of the IMF, which has a reserve of over $600 billion. Up. And where Nigeria can stand to uh, benefit is, of course, in the drone rights of the IMF to be able to access greater 
uh, financing um, without increasing the indebtedness. As you know, we have a um, significant level of, uh, of debt, and uh, so any facility that will make it more um, uh, uh, easier for us uh, to access financing for our development without, you know, um, really uh, increasing our, uh, our debt profile is something that uh, would be a game changer actually for Nigeria. Basically what we have done is uh, w w in our discussions with all of them we have made it clear to them that we are only interested in dealing with companies that are interested in manufacturing in Nigeria. Uh, for us that is our key focus now and uh, we believe that anybody that we are going to be, that we, we that we will be patronizing in Nigeria must be people who are willing to come and manufacture whatever it is they want to do in Nigeria. Total has been a very uh, long-term partner of Nigeria in the oil and gas business and we want that to continue and we really hope we'll see a very constructive PIB and a win-win PIB so that we can con continue to invest at a high level as we go forward. Now a lot more issues came up at the summit where a Nigerian team led by President Mamadou Buhari presented the demands of Nigeria that include investment and debt forgiveness. We shall be delving into that after this break. <music> Nersal Microfinance Bank wishes to inform the general public not to give money to anybody disguising as its staff or agent to secure the COVID-19 Targeted Credit Facility or AGS MEIS loan. However, a training fee is charged by Accredited Entrepreneurship Development Training Institute EDIs for the training and business plan for the AGS MEIS loan. Whenever you are in doubt, please call us at 0901-002-6905. If anyone has collected money to help you get the loan, please log a complaint on our whistleblowing portal by sending us an email on whistleblower at nmfb.com.ng. Nersal Microfinance Bank also wishes to inform the general public that the COVID-19 targeted credit facility disbursed by our bank is a loan and beneficiaries must pay back with interest. The COVID-19 targeted credit facility should not be misconstrued as a grant from the government. Call 094-621-730 or visit www.nmfb.com.ng for more information. Joining us, the program is Business Express, and we delve to the issue of the moment, where I have Paul Alagio of SPM Professionals joining me from Lagos to look at the Africa Finance Summit in France, the decisions and agreements reached, as well as their implications for the Nigerian economy. Mr. Paul Alagio, you're welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you so very much for having me. Okay, good to have you. Well, to start with, how do you see this summit affecting the recovery process, especially with the special drawing rights from the IMF? Well, I, I think it's really good. It's really good. Uh, Africa economy is now projected to grow at average of 3.2, even though it's below the world average. But if all African economy, or most African economy, grows at above uh, 3%, that will be near average population growth rate, which will mean the economy would have improved better than we have it now. So an injection, as mentioned by the uh, the president of France, talking about Macron, that is going to speak with other um, uh, industrial leader or global leader uh, to see if they can give uh, that special withdrawing uh, right to African countries of about uh, 100 billion dollars and uh, earlier in april we called that what bank i mean what bank chiefs have agreed to extend that by over 600 billion dollars uh, for africa so for me i think when you're looking at this volume and if all of these funds are targeted either coming through loans and you know they've also mentioned that uh, one of the considerations is to freeze interest on loans that is Countries we still have to pay back, but without interest. And they will have to pay back in foreign currency at the rate, whatever it may be, in their future. So, for, for, for instance, I'm saying, I mean, I mean, in this case, I think it's a good development, uh, a good window for Africans as an alternative uh, for the situation that most of us have found ourselves presently. Well, it is a fact that all uh, economies globally have their hands on the gear of recovery. This support we're getting at this particular time, is it for our own good? Is it for the global interest? What do you think? Well, the whole world is connected. We live in a global village. 
whatever happens to Nigeria, it may not have direct impact in the U.S., but a matter of time, if U.S. depends solely on cocoa output from Nigeria, uh, after a time, it's going to affect uh, output of uh, chocolate in the United States. So, uh, but when there are competition, it will first affect some Nigeria who spawn would have been used to buy Ford in the United States. So eventually, in the long run, all global economies are connected. So if you are supporting Africans uh, by providing infrastructure, you may think that that will make Africa to be likely independent in terms of economics, but to a large extent, it's going to make the world a better place. I think it's good. I understand everywhere in the world, hands are full. For instance, the conversation uh, that dominates global space is vaccination. How do we vaccinate population so that everybody can go back uh, to uh, their life, the usual, the life before COVID? So, so supporting Africa this time, I think is the way to go. And I think African leaders should consider this. This should go directly. Such one should go into support, providing environment for manufacturing on one hand, health, education things that can make the continent relatively better and individual, the poverty uh, rate that we have in Africa to significantly reduce. Okay, from that fact which you've just stated, let's look at the response from partners like the World Bank. Did you expect it and uh, did uh, Africa extract the needed commitment? Say it again, please. I said, looking at it from what you've said, let's take a look at the response from partners like the World Bank. Did you expect yes. it? That is the response you got from the World Bank. And did Africa actually extract the needed commitment? Well, um, I was expecting similar support from the World Bank. I recall that when you look at countries that have accessed funds from the World Bank or also have uh, equity or investment in World Bank, Africa has very limited uh, contribution. When you look at our Africa uh, Development Bank, you'll be surprised that UK, US, they have significant investment after Nigeria, even in African Development Bank. So, so that will tell you uh, that uh, everybody knows that there are, there are issues with Africa. And I don't want to go into several theories of whether Europe underdeveloped Africa or Africa underdeveloped Europe or Africa refused to develop. I don't want to go into that. I just want to concentrate on what is right, what should we do. Yes, the globe might have left Africa undeveloped, but Africa has not remained a child. After many years of independence from the Western world, what have we done? We have natural resources. So what I think um, World Bank would do, um, World Bank has promised, I've even supported some African countries, even during COVID, Nigeria inclusive during COVID. But I would think what, what I think a World Bank should do is a new approach to giving facility. Whether with interest or grant or without interest, as the case may be, it should be tied to something. They should not just give loose funds. There should be project concern. And for me, and for anybody in the world that perhaps watching this now or later, it should be project specific. And when I say project, either we are putting it directly in infrastructure, or what we help African to save costs, or what we help African to generate to boost revenue. Because these are real concerns. What we put men to job, what seems to be ubiquitous within West African scape right now is insecurity, poverty, and hunger. So if you're going to help such a region, maybe a sub-region in Africa, you are going to be giving projects, not just uh, saying we want to, uh, the government wants to have fantastic plan. No, it's now about the people that the government represents. So in as much as the authority of bank, World Bank cannot go directly to the people, we go, there, we go through the governments of the people, such government must bring proposals. So World Bank must come, I mean, must ensure that proposal they are bringing is not just hand to mouth, it's not just uh, dashing out money to people, because no economy has ever developed. UK did not develop that way. China is not developing this that way. Um, US has not developed that way. So Africa cannot magically develop that way. So it has to be tied to project. And I strongly believe that when this is done, we can start seeing significant improvement across African continent. Okay, should that, should that be the reason why we got a no from the World Bank? And was it too ambitious, again, for the African leaders at the summit to ask for debt forgiveness? 
Well, debt forgiveness is fantastic. I have done research about on a number of African countries. Unfortunately, Africa is moving away from bilateral, multilateral loans uh, into commercial loans such as uh, Eurobond. Uh, and I can tell you, World Bank can never promise you forgiveness on Eurobond because it's purely commercial loan. When you look at Nigerian loans, larger proportion of our loans now are commercial loan. So when World Bank promises, uh, you, even when Africa asks, on what? You can not ask World Bank to look into forgiveness for Eurobond. It's simply foul. It's not possible. You, you cannot get it. But when you are talking to World Bank on World Bank loan, or you are talking to IMF or an IMF loan, you are talking to uh, the president of France uh, to influence maybe Paris law. But when it comes to commercial loan, we need to say to African leaders, you are borrowed, you just have to pay because it's a different ball game mentality in finance. However, for the smaller proportion and few countries that have done largely um, commercial, I mean, that have done bilateral and multilateral, talking about a uh, central republic, uh, um, uh, talk, talk, talking about uh, DRC Congo, uh, such country may get such, and Nigeria may also get because we still have some component of our loan uh, through some of these uh, multilateral organizations under bilateral relationship. So we may get that. But my point here is right now, Africa, not just Nigeria, most some African countries, and the number is increasing by the day by the year, from this kind of loan to commercial loan, which is faster to get, which you 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 you, you advertise, and people buy that you cannot even control who is buying from you. So when it comes to the time okay, to Mr. pay, Paul. the truth is that Africa has to pay back. Okay, with that, with that well said, but with commitment uh, to free private sector funds flow in the continent, Total has already shown interest in increasing stakes in Nigeria. What do you see happening to the economy, possibly around the energy sector? Well, I, I see significant improvement around the energy sector, uh, and I think uh, the move by president is a good one. Uh, Nigeria will become a recipient of such. But when you look at uh, the kind of inflow, capital inflow into Nigeria, apart from oil sector, which other sector? That is why that sector, even though it accounts for less than 10% of the GDP, the revenue from government is more than 80%. What my advice to authorities, starting from the president and governors uh, within Nigeria, is such program, when we go, and not just Nigeria, even leaders across Africa, we consume a lot of content television for instance where are they manufacturing television in africa for instance look at many homes you see at least 30 million tv sets in nigeria whether used or new but now becoming mostly new acs i don't want to mention branding because they have not paid for advert on this program sure but having this presentation, i'm using my laptop i'm using my laptop you know we have telephones and you know the brand why can't we make policy that we compel these individuals to, to manufacture in, in Nigeria and give jobs to our people. You see, when this starts happening, yeah. you're going to see significant reduction in budgetary, in kidnapping. Because they said an idle hand is devil's Devil workshop. Auction. If you go check devil's workshop, you are not going to see a screwdriver and so on. What you see is machetes, gone, AK-47, unlicensed by government. So well government said. of Africa, starting with our country, and we love this country so very much, we should make policy that we make it mandatory. And I'm in support of this. If you are going to, I mean, if you are going to segment power supply for some of this industry, maybe you create one in Kano, one in or your one in name, we you know, create them like that and say you are going to give them special power and distribution so that they can keep producing. When this happens, you are going to see significant improvement, not just within the Nigeria nation, but those states will be affected. So government needs to make that policies, review policy around very and true. ownership. Government yes. needs to also make policy around power supply. For and the rest, large we can SPM advantage. professionals, thank you so very much for giving us insights on the way to go and lessons to learn to make Nigeria a better place. Thank you so very much for having me. Thank you. Well, moving on, following agreement reached between the Aquaribom state government and key stakeholders in the market, three cups of gari is now to be sold for 100 naira as against one cup for 100 naira. Evelyn Badu Ipo reports that this is the resolution reached after a brainstorming session between the State Ministry of Agriculture and major sellers in the market. 
It was a great relief for some residents in Akwaibom State as they trunk in their numbers into the state secretariat to buy gari at an affordable price of three cups for 100 naira as against one cup for 100 naira sold in the local markets. That is great. Hmm? It's a big relief that has gone a long way because if you look at the crowd presently, you should know that it was, it was already getting into a situation of hunger. Commissioner for Agriculture Dr. Glory Edith says the gesture will put an end to artificial scarcity while promoting food sufficiency. So the markets, all the markets in Akwaibom states are now free for anybody to sell whatever. I agree that no market union should store anybody that wants to come into the market and sell uh, essential commodities like food items. So we are great. And with what the government has done to the traders by giving the two billion interest free loan to the traders, we don't have any other option than to support the government to succeed. The residents were also encouraged to capitalize on the fertile soil in the state to cultivate crops for subsistence purposes. Governor Okezie Kweazu is calling for patronage of goods made in Nigeria towards boosting the nation's revenue. Kingsley Ononiwu reports that the governor made the call shortly after enrolling as a trainee at the Footwear Academy in Aba. Over the years, foreign made goods have been preferred to the locally made ones by most Nigerians, a situation that is negatively affecting the growth of the local manufacturing industries and companies. Governor Ibaz, who enrolled as a trainee at the Footwear Academy Aba to encourage the growth of local manufacturing industries and their products, is of the view that the patronage of made in Nigerian goods will not only boost the nation's earning economy, but will also provide job opportunities to teaming unemployed youth in the country. If we don't endorse our own products, wear them, take pride in, 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 in wearing them, then we will just be um, uh, supporting the economic growth of other nations without looking at our own. We can't really grow without leveraging the strength behind the 200 persons in Nigeria as our population to provide markets, ready market for our products. Indians won't buy our shoes. If they do, beautiful. Chinese won't buy our shoes. If they do, beautiful. But Nigerians, if 30 million Nigerians buy one pair of shoes every year, and there is a profit margin of one dollar. That is thirty million dollars to that subsector. There are growing concerns over the increase in the cost of housing as developers and landlords attribute the hike in the price of cement to it. Schools being an integral part of the society have also continued to ease restrictions occasioned by the coronavirus pandemic. Students and tertiary institutions are feeling the bite and are appealing to authorities for the review in the price of cement in the West African region. Since 2019, 2021, there has been a drastic increase in the price of cement. The cost is never known. A bag of cement should be sold at 1,800 because we are also calling for a unified price of cement across this sub-region. In Nigeria, a bag of cement is sold at 35, 4,000. Go to Ghana, it's sold at 2,000. Zambia, 1,800. You go to Niger, it's 1,600. Well, now let's take a trip to the commodities market. Global market update is next with Neka Uko. Stocks in Asia were mixed on Friday following an overnight bounce on Wall Street. Mainland Chinese markets closed lower with the Shanghai Composite 
dropping 0.58 percent at 3,486.56. The Nikkei rose 0.78 percent, while in Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index advanced 0.03 percent. Stocks in Europe received a subdued handover from Asia Pacific. Germany's DAX slipped 0.13 percent, with London's FTSE dropping 0.39 percent, and CAC 40 of France rose 0.24 percent. In the U.S., stock futures edged higher early Friday after major averages rebounded from a three-day losing streak a day earlier. Futures on the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained about 65 points. S&P 500 futures and Nasdaq 100 futures both traded slightly higher as well. And back home in Africa, African markets were slightly higher Friday as major equities traded in positive territory except for Ghana GSE Composite which declined 2.06% in early trade. That's Global Market. I'm Neka Oko. It's over to Benny. Well, thanks, Neka. And that wraps this edition of Business Express. Remember about to keep in touch with us. So do send in your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTA's channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter. And the handle is NTA News Now. And the hashtag is Business Express returns Monday at 3 p.m. Be safe out there.